In this segment of the Employee Data Webinar, we'll go through entering a new employee. So in the top left, under this plus, I'm going to click, and I'm going to add a new employee. Let's say their name is John Smith. You'll notice that this is exactly the same person information screen you see throughout ProCare. There's really nothing different. It's just what content do you want to put in here? You normally would put date of birth, maybe you'd put gender, photo. If you're doing payroll within ProCare, you'd probably put in the social security number. You would also use an email address if you wanted to. And the rest of the content should be quite familiar because it's the standard person record in ProCare. You put in the address and phone number. When you click Continue, I've got John Smith. And there are three essential pieces of information that I'd want to put in. One is up here on the work history. When did John Smith start? So let's say he started on the 15th, currently employed. Similar to child enrollment statuses, you could have statuses entered here ahead of time if you knew the employee was going to, let's say, go on a summer break at some point. The next piece of information I'd want to enter for any new employee is under Information and Relationships. I'd want to know what is the primary work area they have. You don't have to enter this, but it makes check-in a lot easier because if you do select something, let's say this person's going to work in the twos room, they don't have to go hunting through that list every time they check in. We will default them to the twos room. I'm going to save and exit. And the last thing I'd want to have is under the pay rate, even if I'm not doing payroll in ProCare, if I want to lock that hourly pay code down, I would do so by entering something here. So if you don't have anything in here, every time the person goes to check in and out, they're going to get to pick from that entire list, and the payroll person's not going to be real happy with having so many different pay codes. So if it was just one pay code, I'm just going to choose the pay code. If I am using payroll, I would set the rates. If I am concerned at what rate the benefit would pay at, I would flag it here. If I have two different rates, I could hit tab, and I could enter the second rate for that person so that they'd have an option to check in as one thing or the other. Save and exit. Those are the essentials for what I'd want. To complete this, when an employee is finally not going to be here anymore, what you could do is I'm going to take Linda here, and let's say she's been entered, she's been here for a number of years, and now she leaves. Well, the first thing I would do is come in here to work history, and I would say that when that person left, let's say they left on this day, and they went over to terminated positive, I'd say save and exit. And then we're not going to delete her. We're simply going to remove her from view whenever you want to do that. And in order to do that, I'm going to go over to this information and relationship screen, and I'm going to hide the employee in the employee list, save and exit. So she's disappeared from our normal view, but if you ever wanted to find her, you could find her either through the binoculars or using that filter funnel, I could say view all employees and exit, and anybody who I've hidden would be listed here in italicies. To bring them back, you could just double click, unhide them, save, exit, and they're back in view. So all those things on the pull-down menus that we talked about, like the work status, primary work area, pay codes, we discuss all of that in the configuration and report section of the videos. The one thing we're not talking about in this video series is the notion of a schedule. We have an entire webinar on scheduling, and it discusses how the employee schedule can tie into children's schedules and how you can use those in combination for predictive reports as to whether or not you're going to be in ratio at some future point.